This is how I got involved in a worldwide campaign for better back care. Many people with low back pain get the wrong care, causing harm to millions across the world and wasting valuable healthcare resources. Those are not my words, but the opening to a recently published article by eminent researchers. Why is this still happening? We know what works for back pain, but unproven and unhelpful and unnecessary care is routine. Four years ago, I was elected as a trustee to a national campaign group to redress this. We fight for people with back pain to get the best care. It's not only back pain sufferers who get poor care, of course, so we campaign for all musculoskeletal conditions. The group is called the Arthritis and Musculoskeletal Alliance, or ARMA for short. ARMA is 40 or so patient and professional bodies who've banded together with a common cause. Chiropractors, doctors, physios, osteopaths, podiatrists, and a wide variety of patient pressure groups speak as one. Our vision is to promote MSK health of the population throughout life and for everyone to receive appropriate high quality treatment promptly. We believe that everyone should get the right care fast. We organise conferences, meet ministers, lobby NHS England, and we've created a single voice for all those with bone and joint problems, including back pain. We help local NHS organisations develop local plans to understand what's needed to deliver evidence-based cost-effective services for good MSK health, and to help those looking to improve their services. We also lobby on the world stage. ARMA is part of an international network of similar organisations in other countries. I was lucky enough to go to the World Health Assembly at the World Health Organization in Geneva. Although I was a small voice amongst the thousands of delegates, I was able to make a case for better MSK services. It was a privilege to meet Dame Sally Davis, the then Chief Medical Officer. We talked about her project on antibiotic resistance and I told her about the need for better back care. I tried to buttonhole Jeremy Hunt too, but he ignored me. I bet Sally and Jeremy are glad they're not here for the COVID crisis. It seems strange to mention MSK problems like back pain in the middle of a pandemic, which is taking hundreds of thousands of lives around the world. It affects us all. However, it's essential to keep on talking about MSK problems because of their impact other health conditions always get more press, more political attention and more research cash, and we're seeking to redress this. Heart disease, obesity, cancer and Alzheimer's are big problems for sure. But back pain is the single most significant cause of disability worldwide. It affects all age groups, from children to the elderly, and it can be profoundly disabling. Someone with back pain can't exercise as much as they would like, so conditions like obesity and heart disease are made worse. People with chronic back pain also suffer from more mental health problems. Depression and social isolation are worse in people with long-term joint pain. Disability from back pain is highest in working age groups worldwide. It's the most frequent cause of sick leave and early retirement in Europe and accounts for more lost work days than any other musculoskeletal condition. It's time to get serious about back pain. It's easy to see the effects on our friends and family. Most of us know someone who gets episodes of disabling back pain. It's tempting to think that this is a first world problem with inactivity and our sedentary lifestyle to blame. But this would be inaccurate. A study of 500 farmers in rural Nigeria, for example, more than half had reduced their farming workload and one in three had been absent from work in the past year because of low back pain. It's everywhere and it's getting worse. In the United States, the highest healthcare cost of any condition is for back and neck pain, standing at $135 billion. It's gone up 7% a year for the last 20 years and shows no sign of slowing down. Other MSK conditions came in at number two and diabetes number three on the spending spree. 
heart disease was lower at a paltry $90 billion. Despite this tidal wave of back pain suffering around the world, many are not getting the right care. Authors of this recent review concluded that despite their earlier protestations in the prestigious medical journal, The Lancet, their call for evidence-based care has mostly gone unnoticed. Not here. Here at Sundial, we studied the findings and reviewed our care. Fortunately, we didn't have to adjust our care that much, as you might hope and expect as back experts, we were following the best evidence. So what is the best care for back pain? Stay active, avoid bed rest, the option of spinal manipulation and simple painkillers. That's it. In part two of this series, I'll look at the unproven and harmful approaches to back pain that are prevalent throughout the world. Thanks for watching.